So you may have seen this class or this, this lesson in one of my earlier videos. This was designed years ago when I was working with youth and had a perception shift in how guilt, shame, forgiveness, how it all works. And what I left out of the, the class for the masses is the fact that for those of us that do believe in Jesus Christ and that he atoned for our sins, I wanted to do an extended version to specifically talk about that. So go ahead and watch the class. And then at the end, I'll recap and talk about how this relates to our belief in Jesus Christ and the atonement. Let's talk about guilt. The word alone, what does it feel like when, when you hear the word guilt or when you think about guilt? Is it a positive or a negative thing? It can be both depending on what definitions and, and what meaning you apply to the word and how it's expressed in your life. So I want to take some time to go through how guilt can help us and how guilt can harm us. And I've put together some slides to help me do that. So here we go. The truth about guilt, how it can hold you back or help move you forward if that's the way you see it. Hopefully this will give you some new insight so that you can allow it to help you rather than hinder you. So the first thing is to look at how guilt can pull you down because that's what most of us do. We always start out with the circumstance, kind of remembering our manifestation model. Everything starts with a circumstance or the facts of, around us, something that happens, something that we do, something that somebody else done. But for guilt, we're specifically talking about something you've done and usually something you wish you hadn't done. There's a circumstance. And then you get the feeling of guilt. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily feel great. It's that awareness that gives you the, um, the information that something feels wrong. You're not, remember, you're not aligning with your core values or the core who you are. Then it can move into shame. If you're, if you're not seeing guilt as positive and helpful, we allow the guilt to feel that feeling of I've done something wrong to shift into I am something wrong. I'm not good enough. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done that. Um, so, so it's more than just the wrong action. You make it mean something. It's like you, you infuse it into your being. It's not awareness anymore. You're amplifying it to mean I'm not good enough. When that happens, we get the consequences. There are natural consequences to every action. So there's an action, there's a reaction. There are consequences to our actions. However, when we feel this low self-loathing or this shame around what we've done, we often beat ourselves up quick before somebody else hurts me or points out that I've done something wrong, I'm going to do it myself. And then, then maybe that'll save me the pain of somebody else. I'll just let everybody know what a loser I am. And that's how you show up. You beat yourself up. You punish yourself for the crime committed. What happens when you go this route though, is that once you've beat yourself up enough, you get the feeling of you've paid the price. And that, now that the penance is paid, mentally, you now have permission to repeat the action. How many of us have gone over and over in this loop of um, doing something we don't want to do, and then we beat ourselves up and we feel awful, and we even maybe complain to other people, and then we go and do it again, even though we swore we would never do it. But that, that's all. It's all a mind game. So much of life is a mind game. But because when you go through this cycle, 
you give yourself permission to repeat the action, even though you don't want to do it. Does that make sense? So before you move on, pause and think about this for a moment. Even you can even pause the video and take out a sheet of paper and write some things down that you have felt guilty for in the past. Some things that I felt guilty for are um, things I've said, things I've, uh, how I show up with my children, with my spouse, with my job, um, things that I eat that I don't want to eat or at a super certain amount of time, exercise, you know, the list goes on and on. We all have things that we want to do. We want to be over here and we're moving towards though. And then we hit a wall and then we fall back. If we have a program and the program can be literally this line of judge self judgment and paying the price when guilt comes up. So the whole loop can be a program running in your head. When I feel guilty, I kick myself, I suffer the consequences, and then I repeat it. Does that sound familiar? I bet it does for most of us. Instead, we can choose to shift and see it as positive. So it starts with the same thing, the fact, the circumstance. You wish you wouldn't have done X thing. And then here comes that familiar feeling of guilt. It's just the awareness, something feels wrong. What if we could stop right there? What if we could pause and gather this guilt as just what it is? Yes, I did that. Yes. This doesn't align with my internal compass. Yes, I agree with this feeling that's coming up. But that stops there. It doesn't have to shift into shame. It doesn't mean you are any more or less. It means you made a choice. So now, now that you accept it, you accept that this thing you've done doesn't align with your internal compass, then you can analyze it. Why did I do that? Is this a program that's been running? Is this, where did this start at? Why is the first time I've done this type of thing? Where's the sensitizing event? You can either use the manifestation model or you can do self-hypnosis. You can go to a professional. You can um, write and burn. You can use any kind of tool that you've used in the past to analyze your behaviors or your thoughts just so that you can get a better thought so you can see it clearly because remember that old model is not helpful it just throws you down in the gutter you beat yourself up and then you do it again but instead we see it as it is we accept it remember the awareness acceptance and then we're analyzing it we're moving through to find a better solution. We adjust. So with this model, we can move upward. We can take that circumstance, that thing that we didn't like about us or that thing that we didn't like that we did rather, because it's remember, it's not about you. You are still that beautiful, wonderful, golden being of light that is here on the planet earth making mistakes so we can learn from them. So it's a matter of, do we want to let the guilt stop us or do we want to learn from the circumstance and move forward? That's all it is. That's all it has to be. And then once we learn, we have that awareness, we accept it, we analyze it, and then we move into the adjustment, that last phase. You take action with positive can-do attitude and complete forgiveness for the next time the circumstance arises. And that is how you use guilt for your benefit. What do you think? Does that seem doable to you? All right, I know that's a very fast model of how it can be. And when you're living it in the middle of it, it seems much bigger and it's, and it feels like you, you just, it's just not that easy. 
I can hear some of you saying, well, yeah, it's not that easy. I've done some really terrible things. We all have. And the quicker you learn how to use this new way of thinking with guilt, the more you can use it as another tool to move forward. We can learn from our past mistakes or we can repeat them. What do you choose? All right. Thank you for watching so far. And uh, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts. How has this, sh has this shifted your thinking at all? Have you, do you have any gems or aha moments that you caught? I know that this was a vastly different way of thinking than how I grew up and the, the beat myself down thinking that I had when I first had my children and I felt like I had to have guilt over every single thing I did wrong. Yes, my name is Ruthie Renee and I am a recovering perfectionist. I know that there are many, many more perfectionists out there and I can tell you, oh, maybe I'll do a whole class on perfectionism. The idea of perfectionism and often we wear it as a badge of honor. We, we want to everybody to know that we are doing our best, that we're striving for perfection, that we, we, especially as Christians, we want to get into the kingdom of heaven. We want to live with God forever. And that means we have to live a celestial life. We have to, we don't want to have caused pain for Christ suffering and a multitude of reasons go into why perfectionism feels like it's a good goal. It feels like something we want to strive for. However, we're here on this plane, on this earthly plane where we learn from making mistakes more than anything else. Yes, we can learn from videos like this. We can learn from the scriptures. We can learn from books. We can learn from teachers. We learn most when we do it wrong. Even when we know the right way, the right way. And I say that in quotes because right and wrong is so, so relative, right? So we want to be good, which is also relative. What I would like you to think more of and shift your thinking is, to is this helpful? Is this way of thinking helping me become a better person? Is it helping me grow closer and more connected to God? Or is the way I'm thinking keeping me from God? Specifically in the sense of guilt and shame, as, as we were just talking about, holding on to these things or, you know, guilt, again, it's that, it's that, um, it's just data. It's just giving us information. Oh, maybe we want to realign. We're, we're getting disconnected from God. It makes sense if we want that connection, that relationship, that, that bond with God, then guilt would be the little small voice, the Jiminy Cricket, the awareness that oh, maybe what I did is not really connecting us to God like it like I want to be. Okay. So when we fall into beating ourselves up because of what we've done, when we sink into that shame, what does that say about our faith in Jesus Christ? Because if you believe in the atonement the way that I do, Jesus Christ atoned for our sins and not just, not just the the lies we told, the bubble gum we stole, the um, bigger sins, the, the cheating, the whatever that, those may be, but also the sins we don't really pay attention to, the pain, the suffering, the hurt. Our Savior is our Savior because he knows us so intimately because of the atonement. So, that's not something that we pushed him to do. That's not something that we said, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to take care of this. Just you do it. Jesus Christ offered himself. He, he's the one that came up with the plan, 
the saving plan for us. So it's, it's a gift. And what do we do with a gift? If we have a good, healthy mindset, we receive it with gratitude and excitement. And think about the best gift you've ever been given. Did you say, oh, no, 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 thanks. Some of us do when there are problems deep down in our subconscious mind about our worth or a, a whole number of things, we do deny gifts. We deny compliments. Have you ever seen anybody say, oh, wow, you look beautiful. <laughs> and they'll stop it. Literally, here's the body language. Oh, no, this, I barely rolled out of bed. They, they negate the compliments. So it's the same idea with shame. If you are a Christian and you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and suffered so that you don't have to, then we release it. We give it to him. We allow ourselves to learn from our mistakes, our, our sins, and we give him the pain and we give him the desire to sin because he knows what to do with it. And then we shoot, we repent, we turn and we connect ourselves with God again. We learn from it, we improve, and then we let the pain and the anguish and the emotion go so that we can be clear and have the good feels to keep us in alignment with God. Because when we're not congruent in emotion and feeling, we feel uncomfortable, right? Have you ever felt uncomfortable praying because we don't, I'm not worthy. I, I don't, he's, he's disappointed in me. And so I don't want to pray. And that's all just programming you guys. That's silly, silly nonsense. God loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. And he wants to see us succeed. And so he wants to hear from us because guess what? Just like any wonderful parent, he wants to know our pain so that we can work through it with him so that we can hear and feel his, his voice and his guidance. So I just wanted to add that in there with this shame and guilt model so that you can keep that in mind. When I allow myself to sink into shame, to allow myself to bring guilt, to bring me down, that's like saying, thanks, Jesus, but I'm going to take this one on my own. And if that's the case, I'd like to ask the question, how's that working out for you? If you keep doing the same loop, like we were talking about, it's not working out for you. Let's practice another way. Let's practice using the atonement because that's what it's there for. It's the gift that we've been given. Thank God. <laughs> Such a beautiful plan. I use it every day. I hope you do too. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, this is Ruthie Renee with Quantum Field Trips. Like, subscribe, please share with, with your groups or your friends or your family that could use a little boost.